In this video, we will take a look at some of the new post exploitation evasion techniques for the upcoming release. In one of the previous releases of Brute Retail, that is V1.5, there was a new feature added, specifically an advanced module stomping technique, which could not only restore the original uh, DLL region once the payload goes to sleep, but it will also modify your LDR data table entry, which can be verified with the help of WinDBG. So in my current example here, if we take a look at our listener configuration, we have stormed the chakra.dll. If I go back to process hacker here and search for our chakra.dll region, we can see we have an Rx region. And if I open it up, we can see this is not my brute retails region, even though my payload is residing within this region. So if I open, let's say chakra.dll, and if I go to the section headers, we can see that the text section is exactly similar to our text region that we have. Because currently my payload that I have here, it is uh, under the sleep of one second. There's no jitter over here. So as soon as the payload goes to sleep, the uh, badger will simply restore the original contents of the DLL and it will uh, again rewrite it, wipe it back and add badger's region over there and so on. So basically this is very different from your general uh, module stomping technique because if you're dealing with something like Cobalt Strike or any other open source uh, C2s or any other C2s uh, in general, then they will simply stomp the module and you can simply perform a scan of uh, the text region of a module in memory and the text region of the module on disk and verify whether it is stomped or not. This is however not possible with Brute Retail unless the Brute Retail's badger is in sleep zero. Now, in case of the current release that is V1.7, it was observed that whenever you execute something like let's say BOF or your uh, memory executable, these are dynamically mapped into memory. So for example, let's say if I use the cough exec command to execute our box reflect.c file. It's a very simple C file. Uh, let me show you the code that I have here. So if I do cat box reflect.c, you can see it doesn't do anything fancy at all. It simply prints executing message box executes message box A and then prints that it has been executed. So if I execute this, whatever opcodes that are generated by this specific C file into an object file, and there are various sections that would be there into the object file as well. So I can simply do obj dump hyphen m intel hyphen d, let's say box reflect dot o, and you can see the various sections that have been created by your object file. So these are the opcodes, the actual executable region of your message box A. You can see the various um, offsets over here for our coffee section. That is our dot text region, the main entry point of our object file, the R data region, the X data and a few other regions. So whenever you execute something like uh, an object file or an executable with the help of the mem exec command, these regions are mapped into various sections into memory, similar to your reflective DLL and then their entry point is called. So if we execute this box reflect.o file here, let's see what happens. We can see that we have a message box reflected text here. I'll open Badger, I'll do refresh, I'll align these. And let's see, we can see that we have one single Rx region of four kilobyte, nothing else. This region is not backed by a DLL or executable as you can see on disk. So if I, let me put this aside. If I double click on this Rx region, you will see the same executable region here or the executable code, the op codes 55, 48, 89, E5, etc., which is what you would see over here, which means that this is the text region which got mapped to our memory. However, uh, in my case, if I go back to the C file that I have, we can see that we are simply executing message box and nothing fancy. 
in a real life engagement you might execute um, a lot of variety of tasks for example let's say you might execute anything related to memory for example your indirect syscalls or let's say for example loading of libraries or something else which is being tracked by your etw in those scenarios even though your brute details payload the badger itself is stormed by a module the brute details badger uh, will only help its own post exploitation activities so for example whatever you execute within brute retail all these commands that you see will be backed by a stormed module by in our case which is chakra.dll as we saw over here however in case of your bof or your memexec command they will not be stormed sorry they will not be backed by a valid module so if i click on okay even though the rs region gets released when it got executed when the etw scan uh, took place by uh, one of the edrs such as let's say your uh, my md atp or it could be your elastic all those can simply scan and perform a quick yara rule or opcode detection on this case so what we can do here is that with the upcoming release of brute retail we have added a module stomp command the module stomp command can configure any dll that you require and uh, it will map whatever bof or executable that you execute within the storm dll what it further does is that once your stomping is complete it will also restore the original region of the dll as well as it will also uh, patch the ldr data table entry which is mentioned uh, in this blog over here similar to the core of brute retail now you might be thinking about the detections and if you're worrying about what kind of detections take place in etw you might want to read a blog that i've pasted over here which explains how you can do uh, how you can evade the detections by using rob gadgets and stuff but with the new release of elastic some of these might still be detectable if you directly use this technique as is so especially for loading libraries in this case however coming back to bof we wanted to make it a much more evadeable by backing it up with a valid dll on disk so let's see how this works i will storm the module called as netshell.dll and before i do it i'll quickly check which dlls are loaded in my uh, process i want to make sure that my uh, netshell.dll the dll which i'm going to stop here is not existing is not uh, present in the current uh, already loaded module list so if you see that uh, our um, dlls which start with the letter n starts here and they end here and we don't have any netshell.dll so let's keep an eye on it and see how it changes i will hit enter and there won't be anything over here because till now you have not executed literally anything at all and now i will execute box reflect.o again the moment i hit enter you can see that netshell.dll was loaded here I'll keep this message box aside. I'll go to memory, refresh, and I'll align these with the help of the names again so that I can just track down netshell.dll. So you can see that we have our netshell.dll here. If I open it up, you can see we have the exact same opcode that is 554889E5, which we actually saw within our object file 554889E5. and so on which means our uh, bof successfully stormed netshell.dll if i click on okay i should get my output over here whatever the output was and if i go back and click on reread you can see the contents have been restored and if i click on refresh here again you can see that the netshell size has also been restored to its original size we can verify this by opening our uh, netshell.dll and if i go to the sections header let's validate this if i go to export sorry sections text and if you take a look at the sections header you can see that it all starts with cc then the remaining opcodes are 48 89 5c 24 and so on the exact one which means the original contents were restored back over again the same thing is also applicable with your memexec command and the best part is that you can simply switch the dll that you want to stomp on the fly with the set command as well 
So for example, let's say you want to storm some other module, let's say audio eng.dll for example. Let's verify that audio eng is not loaded here. So you can see we have only one module starting with A. I'll type let's say memexec and this full path of uh, an executable from my sys internals toolkit. Now I have stormed audio eng.dll and I don't have audio eng.dll loaded yet. So if I hit enter, let's wait. You can see that we have received our output from volume ID 64. And you can see that our audio eng.dll was also loaded into memory. A quick comparison with the ones on disk. Let's say if we scroll down, let me refresh. You can see we have our RX region here. And if I open up the RX region of audio ENG, section text, you can see the contents are exactly the same 48, 8D, 0D, and so on. Similarly, if I go back and perform, let's say, instead of this, if I do cough exec and execute my box reflect dot, let's say, O, it should execute. The, as you can see, we have a message box here. If I do a reread, we can see the contents have been changed with our message boxes opcode. As you can see, 55, 80, 48, 89. I click on OK. We should get a response back. And I'll click reread. And you can see the original contents have been restored all over again. So this is how you can hide your uh, traces by backing your BOFs as well as your memory executions on disk. Now, another... Um, major uh, update uh, to one of the features of brute retail was a screenshot command so if i type screenshot you can see that you can specify uh, you can just enter the command and it will take the screenshot and store it in your downloads directory however with this release there's a new feature called as record screen command with the record screen command you can actually record the whole screen like a screen recorder for your whole uh, host you can also specify the quality and the number of minutes that you want to record. So for example, I'll just enter, uh, enter over here, record screen. Let's say I will keep the quality as medium because I don't want to go too low. Depending upon your high, medium or low, the size of your uh, generated frames per video will differ. And the number of minutes over here, let's say I'll keep it to one minute only. So... You can see that the recording was started right now and it will end in exactly one minute. So we'll just go back and see what things and we'll just uh, interact with the system over here just to make sure that our screen is recorded properly with the various different types of data sets and so on. And I'll go back, I'll type tasks, sorry, my bad, get tasks. I'll type stop task zero. You can st stop the record screen quickly as well if required, or you can wait for one minute for it to be recorded. And you can see we have our uh, downloads uh, directory, which contains the AVI file, which you can also see over here. The file has been created. So now let me actually go to the downloads directory here. So tell releases, let's say downloads and let's see our video file that we have and you can see we have our fully recorded screen whatever we did over here and so on so this is a quick video of screen recording which is currently present in the upcoming release there's a lot more that uh, v1.7 offers which i'll explain in uh, the upcoming blog but uh, that will be all for this video and if you have any queries feel free to ping me up on discord or twitter